Hello, it's Andrew here at Life on Pig Row. Um, before we carry on the video today, don't forget to like and subscribe. We've had a really bad week for snow. That was my lane out. I couldn't get out. It's taken several days for it to melt. The rain kind of finished off the last bits. But now we're gonna have a quick look. We're gonna start in the courtyard and we're gonna go up to the potager. So I'm gonna show you the courtyard, the cottage garden, and the potager, and the plans we have for them. So, for those of you who regularly follow the blog and the channel, remember, new film every week, you will know that we, we rebuilt this wall last year. And as you can see, you couldn't remotely tell now. The lichens have moved in. And you know how I sped that up? A little help from the call of nature. When I needed the toilet, I filled the bucket up, and I looted it, and I threw it in the wall. Yes, it is gross, but it worked, didn't it? It looks like it's never, ever been taken down. So as you can see here, there's our three trees that we potted up. You can find that video on our channel, looking at burr rooted plants and how to pot them up, ready for later in the year. We took some cuttings of roses, which are down here, -da, and look, they're coming back to life. And if we look at the rest of the courtyard now, you'll see it's not all as we'd hope it would be. Let's be honest, we thought we'd be a lot further ahead than this. We thought it would be levelled by now, but we've just simply not had the time. And we're not going to lie, we're not going to kind of show you something that's completely and utterly finished. At the moment, again, it's kind of a storage for the last of the wood that we've been using over winter. There's an old sink there that we're going to use as a planter. You know, even down to the rubble here that we're going to use to level the ground with, and the stone there, and the window that's yet to be filled in. But, you know, in the end, what we're going to do, we're going to have a shed here. It's all going to be graveled, all going to be in pots because we're on bedrock. And we'll take it from there. In the cottage garden, the chives are coming back already. I can't believe that. But we've had some casualties. So if we look over here, this was my rosemary. Should have brought it under cover. I could kick myself. But there you go. It's dead. Let's get on with it, Andrew. Let's move on. The great thing is that we are getting loads of daisies, marguerites. So I'm going to lift some of these where they've self-seeded, clear this area, and plant them all in different areas so we've got them. We're going to move some of the fruit from on this side over to this side. Specifically, the blueberries are going to go there. And as we move up the garden, across the path that like we did a few years ago, there's our apple tree that we planted recently. Again, you can find that on the channel. But you'll also notice we've had a casualty again. Post, wooden post. I'm getting sick of wooden posts dying on me. Uh, they last about 10 years, even with uh, treatment below and above ground. Uh, we still lose them because it gets so wet here. So I think I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and invest in something a little bit more expensive, probably something metal. Uh, any suggestions, leave them in the comments below, they'd be welcome. You'll have noticed we've not tidied away any of the old foliage. I won't do that until probably the end of this month. And the reason for that is there'll be predators and beneficial bugs in there, and I'll clear it all out then. So if we move up the path, the stone wall that I built donkeys years ago is still going strong. We found the lid to our compost bin that had blown away. It landed on our neighbor's kitchen roof and was there for quite a few months. They gave, them, gave it us back a few weeks ago. The daffodils are starting to come up. We have a big problem with moss again. And yes, it's about drainage, but there's something we need to do, get on top of, or it's just the kind of thing that we're going to have to deal with and allow it to happen. That's the cottage garden at the moment. Looking a bit miserable. The buddleia is beginning to bud and leaf up. I've pruned that back a little bit. And you can hear the trees and the bushes and the hedges rustling behind me. And, you know, it's not too bad. You know, things have come through winter and it's not been a great winter, it's been very damp. And now into the potager, and over here is our rhubarb patch, and they're all coming back. It's also had a bit of a, 
a top dressing, the rhubarb of mulch. But again, you can see how damp it's been. Even up here where it is well drained, we've got moss growing. Over here, we've got tires, which we normally plant flowers into. Uh, they're going to be moved up to the new vegetable patch because this is the old vegetable patch and it's going to change. And I'm going to tell you why it's going to change. So I've been joined by some noisy hens behind me. Say hello, noisy hen. That's Agatha, Agatha Christie. The reason we're changing this garden is we decided to move the veg patch further up the hill and we want to change this into a cutting garden. And the idea behind that is we want flowers for the house, simple as that. So we're going to move the tyres that are going to go up into the veg plot because we can still plant flowers into them. Uh, we're going to have an arbour where I'm sat now on some tyres, which would be lovely. It'd be a relaxing kind of well-being garden for, for your mental health. But let's have a just quick look around and can show you what's going on. So the garden was constructed quite a few years ago now and it has three raised beds. I don't think I'd be able to afford to do this now because the price of wood has just escalated beyond any kind of reasonable price really. Uh, so in here at the moment we've got, we've got strawberries but again, not this year but probably next year, we'll probably move these on to another area further up the hill. And I've got strawberries on this side. I'm going to leave them this year. We've got garlic on this side. Remember I said it was going to be a flower garden. Well, that's going to be garlic and cosmos. Over here, there's going to be dahlias. Down in these two beds, we're going to go for sweet peas. So we're not going to go for anything that requires lots of maintenance. We're going for stuff that we like to grow. And as you can see at the moment, it's all looking a bit miserable and sad and, and it needs weeding. And there's some, <laughs> some left here. There's some uh, spring onions left down there uh, that made it through winter. The nets are still on, they should come off. Uh, over here we've got garlic coming up. But you know, it just shows you what can be done in a, in a reasonable space. So that's just a quick tour of uh, the courtyard garden, which is not even remotely started yet. The cottage garden, which is our oldest garden and the most bedded one. Uh, what I mean by bedded, it's been there for quite a few years. In fact, it's been there for just over 10 years now in different forms. The potager, which is about four years old now, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, uh, which is going to become a flower garden. And the chickens are still being really nosy behind me. Going, meh, 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 meh. Look at me, give us some corn. Uh, so until next time, it's goodbye from me, Andrew at Life and Pigro. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Every subscription helps us move forward. So until next time, bye bye.